Hi, this is going to be the video about foreign keys, key relationships, relationships between tables. I've been saying all along that salt corn becomes really powerful when you have relationships between different tables. So let's see what that looks like and what that can do for you. In this video, we will see how to set up these relationships between tables by adding fields to the tables. And in the next video, we will see how that influences your views and what new possibilities that brings in terms of your views. So in the last video, we created this uh, Kanban board. We created a task table that uh, holds the tasks that you're going to, um, somebody is going to perform. We also have this uh, table of, uh, of people that are foolishly called people one. Um, and that has a bunch of people in it. We have a list of uh, these people. And then I've also just created just now a uh, list for the tasks. Okay, so what I want to do in this application is I want to say who's going to do these tasks, right? So I want to say that uh, Rebecca is going to take out uh, to uh, buy milk and, uh, you know, Olivia will uh, take out the trash. So how do we do that? Well, that's what we need keys for, foreign keys, relationships between tables. So let's go back and, and look at our spreadsheet analogy again that we talked about when we first introduced data in SaltCorn. So I have this table in my spreadsheet. This is good old Excel. I've got a spreadsheet with the people here. I think I, I showed you that before. And now I've created another tab uh, that I should probably call ta tasks. And so I've got a table like that here in, in Excel, a spreadsheet for the tasks. So I've got two tabs now, one for people, one for the tasks. Okay, so now I want to say that Rebecca is going to take out the trash. So one way I could do that is I could, um, I can add a column. Let's call this who. And um, I'll say Rebecca here. Okay, so now Rebecca is going to take out the trash. Um, I could also have gone to the other table and said, uh, you know, create another column here. And I can say, uh, let's make this a little bit wider. You know, I can say, Rebecca, take out the trash. Now, um, okay, so that's one way of doing it. That's two ways of doing it, um, but uh, they're both wrong. So there are a couple of problems with this. Uh, first of all, I, I don't know where to put it. Uh, secondly, um, you can see I made a mistake already. Let's fix that. So now it's take out the trash. Oh, that wasn't even a, let's fix this. So now it matches, but Let's say that I've assigned Rebecca to take out the trash like that, and then somebody comes along and decides that they want a different vocabulary and, you know, they want to call it rubbish instead. And now Rebecca is, you know, her task is pointing to uh, a task that no longer exists. Okay, so the first thing to remember is that in databases, as opposed to spreadsheets, uh, we have a uh, another field that uh, we sometimes hide, but it's there. So every row has a primary uh, key. And in SaltCorn, usually this is a, a, an integer called ID that uh, increments automatically and just sits in the background so you can identify things. So let's add this to our spreadsheet. So every row will have an ID and there will also be an ID on, on the person's table. Okay, so instead of saying the label here, then I can instead now put the primary key value on the other table. So here, if I want to say that Rebecca should take out the trash, the rubbish, whatever we call it, then that task has ID number one. And so I put a one here. Uh, on the other hand, I could, if I instead had the designation for who should carry out the task on the tasks table, 
then I could instead put that one here. And that is essentially what a foreign key is. It is a field you introduce on a table that refers to a row on a different table. It refers to the primary key on a different table. Okay, so which table should you, however, put this key field on? Should we put it on the people table or should we put it on the task table like this? Don't put it on both. You don't put the foreign key on both. You put it on one table to refer to a different table. But which one should we put it on? Well, it's not like there are any rules. However, you have to make choices and those choices have consequences. And let's see what the consequences would be of putting it on one or on the other table. I want to explain what those consequences are. So I'm going to move into a slightly more schematic format here. So I've just redrawn these tables. Uh, I've left out a lot of stuff. The persons or people table has addresses, phone numbers, but we're not concerned with that right now. And we're leaving out the description and the status as well from the tasks. But here are my two tables in tabular format. Now, I want to link them somehow by adding a field that indicates the primary key, the ID on the other table. So if I add that field to the people table, then I can say that Rebecca is going to take out the trash and Olivia is going to buy milk. But what I cannot do is I cannot say that Rebecca is going to both take out trash and buy milk because I cannot add two values to this field. Every field has to have a single value. Conversely, if I add that key to the tasks table, then I can say again that Rebecca is going to take out the trash and Olivia is going to buy milk. But I can also say that Rebecca is going to both take out the trash and buy the milk. What I cannot say is that Rebecca and Olivia are going to work together on taking out the trash because then I'd want to add one and two to this field here. And I cannot, again, add two values to one field. It's one value per field per row. Now, so if I add the key to the tasks table, pointing to the people table, then we say that a person has many tasks. Even if in in reality, it, like here, every person has uh, zero or one tasks, this design suggests that a person could have many tasks in this sense here, where Rebecca now has two tasks. And we say that the task belongs to the person. So uh, every task is associated with a person. Now that's a, there are more cases because we could also have blanks here. So assigned to may not be required, in which case it could be blank. There's no person who's going to buy the milk, but we still say that this design, we call it, we say that a task belongs to a person. We also refer to the people table in this case as the parent table and the tasks as the child table. I don't think you have to remember that, but you may find that natural after you've been doing a couple of these designs. And if we go back to the other case where the key field is on the people table, then we say that the task has many persons because in this design, both Rebecca and Olivia could take out the trash and therefore that task has many persons associated with it and the person belongs to task. Both of these scenarios are equally valid. One isn't right and the other one is wrong. 
it depends on what the relationship is between the task and the people in your organization. For instance, if these tasks were larger tasks where they're big projects, they may have more than one person working on them. And uh, on the other hand, they may be small tasks and one person may be assigned to multiple tasks. Now, sometimes both of those two scenarios are too simple and you need more flexibility. So what happens if you have a situation where you both want a person to be able to work on multiple tasks and you also want multiple people to work on the same task? In that case, you have to introduce a new table. Let's call this assignments. And so now in this case, we have no keys, no foreign keys on the people and the task table, but we create a new table that consists exclusively of its keys to these two tables and denote a relationship between these two entities. So in this example, Person one and two, Rebecca and Olivia, are both going to work on taking out the trash. And in addition to that, Rebecca is also alone going to buy milk. So we call this type of relationship a many to many relationship. And we call this table, which I here have called assignments, but in general, we call this type of table a join table because it uh, it joins together these two tables. Okay, let's see how we could implement this in SaltCorn. So this is the SaltCorn application. I've got my list of tasks and the list of, of people. And so now I have to choose one of them to put a key on. Now these seem like small tasks. Um, so it might be natural that uh, to put a key field on the task table so that uh, every task is assigned to one person and one person can carry out multiple tasks. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to add a field and I'll call it, instead of calling it who, like we did before, it's, it's conventional to call it something like assigned to. You can call it what you like, but, but this is what I usually do. Um, so in the type, I am going to pick the key. So that will be the key to people. Right, so we're on tasks. I'm going to add a field that is a key to people. That sounds right. I have to think very carefully about these required and unique attributes as well. So if it is required, then every task must be assigned to a person. I might want that, but I don't think I want that yet because I want this, a workflow where I can first create tasks and then assign them to people. If it is unique, then that means that the same person cannot appear more than once as the assignee of a task. That effectively makes this not a has many relationship, but a has one relationship, where there is a one to one relationship between tasks and people. Sometimes that's appropriate, but that's not what we want here. We want to have Multiple tasks can be assigned to one person. And then I have some options here. First of all, the, the summary field is, um, it is a field that we designate on the person table, which is going to act as a summary for the row you're choosing. So we're going to choose in some user interface, we're going to build a user interface where we choose which person to assign this task to. Now, there are a lot of fields in the person table. We don't want to use the ID, even though that is what is stored in the database. We don't want to use the ID that for the user to see that because they don't know who user five is, but they do know who the name is. I emphasize this is a default field that is used 
if you don't specify anything else. Sometimes you want to be able to use two fields. Um, for instance, if you have a large number of people, there might be people with the same name. And so you may want to concatenate them. So you say name and date of birth. So we can do that in SaltCorn, but you do that as an attribute on um, on the box where you enter the, uh, the person. So right now we'll just pick a, a default, which is name. And so if we don't do anything else, that will be the value that we choose the row of people by. Then uh, we can skip this. There's a full text search and sometimes you want it to appear. Then there's an option here where you have to decide what happens if um, if a row is deleted. So if I had said that Olivia is going to take out the milk. So now I'm adding a key field on tasks to the person. So of course I can delete that task. That's not a problem. I just delete the row. But what happens if I uh, take out the milk points to Olivia and then I'm going to delete Olivia from the database. Uh, that's a problem now because um, then that's that key is referencing a row that no longer exists and relational databases prevent this. So this uh, they prevent that you get these called dangling pointers uh, that you get these keys that that refer to nothing. And uh, you can constrain the database to stop that. In fact, you, you have to stop that the database will not accept an inconsistent uh, set of values. So you have three possibilities. What should happen if the person we have assigned this task if their row is deleted? So you can either fail. So that means that you're going to stop the deletion, you cannot delete a person if they have any tasks assigned. You can set cascade, it's explained here below what what it actually means. So if I delete uh, a person, then I also delete all of the tasks that um, are assigned to that person. That's a little bit drastic, but sometimes that's what you want. And second, lastly, I can set it to null. So that means that if uh, I have a task, and if I delete the person, then uh, those keys are set to the effectively set to the missing value. So they become empty. So that task then becomes unassigned. Uh, that sounds like a good option here. So let, let's set that to set null. So that of course requires that this key is not required. Okay, so I have now created my key here. And I can immediately see it in the table. Uh, let's see here. Let's make everything a little bit smaller. Ah, sorry, it's actually over here. And already in the data grid, I can start assigning people. Um, let's set Taylor, etc. So now I have created these relationships, and so now all of my tasks row task rows are assigned to a person. And because I chose the summary key of the name, that is the one I have in this drop down. Very briefly at the end of this video. Now I just want to show you some of the things that means for your user interface that you build in SaltCorn and some of the things you can do now that you have linked the tables. In the next video, we'll go much more into all of those possibilities. So the first thing I can do is in my task list, I can now add a join field. So a join field is a field on a different table that is related through a key. So on this list of tasks, I want another column, which shows me who this task is assigned to, I go into edit my task list, one way I can do that is to go through the task list and hit configure. And I can now add a join field on this list. So I can select join field as the type of the column. And now I have all of the possibilities here. So the one that I want is assigned to name. And then I add that. And let's see our task list. Here we go. So that is the name that is of the person this task has been assigned to. So notice we don't see the ID, we see the name. Uh, that happens to be the summary field that I saw in the other one, but I could have chosen any other field as my join field on the person table. So I could have put the address here or the telephone number, maybe if you want to call the person who is assigned to do this task, you can put any join field on here. The second thing I could 
do is I could um, I could link to um, a view that describes the person by a relationship. So on the again on the task list, I can link to another view. So I can choose. Let's say I want to. Okay, what do I want? I want to see the person that this is assigned to. So again, you choose a view, you choose the relation that this is um, based on. And then we add uh, a label. And I add this. And let's see how that works. There we go. So I can jump from the task to the show view for the record that uh, this is related to by the join field. I think I'll stop there. There are many further possibilities and we will go through all of those in the next video.